Handicapper Steve here, handicapping the racing from Tampa Bay Downs here on Saturday. It is the the 10th of February 2024. It's Sam F. Davis Day from Tampa, and I'm going to look at the Sam F. Davis and all the other stakes races on the program. But before I get on to that, remember to please follow me on Twitter at Horse Racing Kit 5 for more selections for race courses around the world. And I mean it around the world. Um, you know, it's going to be uh, I have a very busy month this month. I'm moving in about two weeks, so it's going to be fun. But uh, after that, we have some good, good racing that we're really going to get into, especially at the beginning of next month with the uh, Fountain of Youth, Sansi Handicap, Gotham. So uh, just stick around for that. So, um, But um, t- today's card from Tampa is very good. We're going to look at the stakes races, races 5, 7, 8, and 10. The fifth race now for from Tampa. It's kind of a Kentucky Oaks prep race. It's Sunco Stakes going for a purse of $150,000. Race for three year old fillies here. We have a field of six horses going one mile and 40 yards on the main track. My top selection, I'm going to go with the four horse Life Talk. 4162 for me in the Superfecta. 4162 Super. Top selection, four horse Life Talk. Three year old Philip Gun Runner. Tom Fletcher trains. Jose Ortiz gets the mount. The horse's most recent appearance came in the Demoiselle at Aqueduct on a very weird, muddy racetrack. Mile May uh, 2nd of December, and she won by three and a quarter lengths. The track was playing towards speed, speed, speed. If you were on the inside, you were winning. If you're on the front end, you were winning. He just took off clear. A very good race. He's getting major class relief from the previous races, but not a bad race. Refreshing here. Back to um, this course. Not the world's toughest horses. I think she could get the uh, trip to win. Three to five is a crap price, though. Two back in the Breeze Cup Juvenile Phillies at San Sanito, mile 16th, 3rd November. She finished fourth by three and three quarter lengths, and I thought if she had a better trip, she could have uh, did a little bit better. She's drawn 11 of 12, which probably cost her. She had, she left to get good position out of the gate. She was still wide throughout. The winner, just FYI, who actually beat this horse two in, two in a row, really ran terrifically. But this horse, she got around the race course okay there. And then the Frisette at Aqueduct on a sloppy, sloppy day. Mile 7th of October, she finished third by four and a quarter lengths that day. She stalked, she just couldn't get, catch just FYI, who just had the jump on her, but she ran her heart out that day. And then over the Wilson Mile at Saratoga in a main special rate over the, for 105,000, she won by six and a quarter lengths. She sat back early. And she took off clear late. A very, very good run. She was lugging in a little bit, but that's because she was in front by a bunch. But she's really improved with every single race, I think. Training well, Palm Beach. 3-5, to five, like I said, very crap price, but she can win here. To recap my selection for the fifth from Tampa, now it's the Sun Coast. Going to take the Five Horse Life Talk. 4-1-6-2 in the Superfecto. The seventh race from Tampa now. It's the Minaret Stakes going for a purse of $50,000. Race for Phillies and Mayors, four-year-olds and upwards. We have a field here of nine horses going the 1,200-meter journey or six furlongs on the main track. My top selection here in the Minaret, I'm going to go with the number three horse unifying. Let's go 3-2-4-1 in the Superfecta. 3-2-4-1 Super. Top selection three horse unifying. This four-year-old Philly by Union Rags. Riley Mott range. Junior Alvarado gets to mount. The horse is most recent out again, 30th of uh, December. Goldstream, one mile on the rampart, and finished third by four lengths that day, and she just kind of stalked all the way around the racetrack, first on a little bit. She needed the race. She just needed something more. Refreshing back to six furlongs, lesser quality horses. I think she's going to be in a better spot to win. Two back in the Leslie's Lady at Ellis. Sloppy Steel going seven furlongs on the 11th of June. She won by three lengths that day, and she stalked that day a little bit, um, you know, in between in the lane, but when she got through late, she took off clear. A very, very good um, victory facing some decent horses that day. And then off to 100 at Oakland, six furlongs, 5th of May. She won by one quarter length. She sat back early, a little bit um, a trouble trip in the lane, but she found room to get the job done. A very, very good race. As the, the year went on at Oakland um, in early 2023, she got better. Um, you know, she started the season off a little subpar in, on the 20th of June routing. Came back sprinting where she had a good place. Had a very trouble trip in March, uh, that early March race, or excuse me, early April race, and then finally went after that in, um, in May at, uh, at um at uh, Oaklawn, but she's training well. I think she benefits going back to six. She could win here. The two are Shy Town Lady for Tyler Gaffleyon and Wesley Ward. One surprised me if this horse wins. Most recently, over the slop over the seven at Belmont, an optional lady in mid June. She finished third by three lengths. Very tough horse that she was facing that day. Hot Fudge was the next start winner. This horse was just one. She just wasn't getting into it, but she was closing up well. Prior to that, Keeneland, six and a half, an optional hundred. She finished third by three quarters length. Again, didn't get out of the gate so clearly. Was stupidly wide, but she was gaining that day. At the speed, melts down it wouldn't surprise me if she gets a trip to win here she's some you know you know it, it's taken her a little bit of time to get to the racetrack in some most previous races but she has ability here she's a great one winner she won the test in 2022 on, on a seal going quite quite nicely but i'll use her here at five too but to recap my selection for the seventh now from 
Tampa, it's the Minaret. Going to take the three horse unifying. Give kudos to the two horse Shy Town Lady. Three, two, four, one super. Three, two in the multi race. The eighth race now from Tampa, it's the Pelican Stakes. Going for a purse of $100,000. Race four year olds and upwards. We have a field of eight horses going 1,200 meters or six furlongs in the Pelican. Going to take the six horse here. A little Vic as a top selection. Six, two, seven. 6274 for me in the Superfecta. 6274 Super. Top selection 6 horse Little Vic. And if you see me keep looking that way or whatever, it's because the cat's paw is coming under the. Um, I can see it in my provisional. For, can't say that word. I can see it on the side of my eyes. Paw coming underneath the door. It's getting a little annoying now. But um, he's been doing that a lot lately. I don't know why. Um, but uh, 6274 for me in the Superfecta. Top selection 6 horse Little Vic. This 5 year old horse for practical joke. Juan Avila trains. Carlos Oliveira gets the mount. The horse's most recent outing came the Rumson at Monmouth. Dashing five rungs on the dirt 3rd of December, uh, September. She finished 4th by six and a half lengths that day. And she just never really got comfortable. Had to steady a few times. It just wasn't a day to win. Way down the class side her. Back to six, which I think is the horse preferred trip. It wouldn't surprise me if this horse upsets. He has a lot of speed into him that, that I think could do wonders in this race. Just wasn't doing wonders in the Alfred Vanderbilt, a grade one event at Saratoga on the slop, six rungs, 29th of July. Finished seven by 30 and a three quarter lengths that day and just showed nothing, absolutely nothing. It was wide. Elite power freak that day. Gunnett was the next start winner, finished second. It just wasn't his day to win. And then the John Nehru at Belmont, seven rungs, first of July. He finished fifth by six and a half lengths that day and he just set the pace and then just kind kind of got caught off the bench. He needed the race there. And then the Carter at Aqueduct, seven from was in April. He finished six by five and a half lengths that day, and he just stalked, and again, never really got the job done. Most previous victory was a quite nice run in the uh, Tom Fool Handicap at Aqueduct in March of 2023 over the six. He won by one and a half lengths that day, and on the f- from a tracking trip, he closed up into a very, very nice victory, uh, and had a decent place behind Repo Rocks in last year's uh, Toboggan. Training well locally, off the bench, I'll give him a shot here. I think the two-horse Nakatomi can win also for Tyler Gaffleone and Wesley Ward. Um, hasn't won since an optional 80 up Saratoga in mid-July, where he won by three and a quarter lengths, closing up well uh, that day. Um, you know, came back to run a decent place in the Phoenix by Hoist to Gold, and came back to run a decent third in the Brewers Cup sprint at um, at uh, Santa Anita. You know, another horse, when he shows up on the racetrack, he always shows up to run these decent races. Refreshing here, I'll give him a shot. And even the seven horse Sibelius, um, you know, one last year's Golden Shaheen. Um, has finally won the last time out since the Shaheen, where he won the Mr. Prospector at Goldstream quite nicely from a stupidly wide trip, but he flew on the front of that day. Refreshing back to the racetrack here, where he won uh, this race last year as a prep to the Mideast races. I'll give him a shot here on the ticket. But to recount my selection for the 8th now from Tampa, it's Pelican. Going to take the 6-horse Little Vic. Give kudos to the 2-horse Nakatomi and the 7-horse at Bellius. 6274 Super, 627 in the multi-race. Let's get to race number 10, the featured on the program. It's the Sam F. Davis stakes. It's going. It's a great three event going for a $250,000 purse. Race for three-year-olds here. Field 12 horses going 1,700 meters or a mile 16th on the main track. The top selection here in the Sam F. Davis. I'm going to go with the six horse, Agate Road. I'm going to go 6293 in the Superfecta. 6293 Super. Top selection, six horse, Agate Road. Three row coat by Quality Road. Tom Pletcher trains. Jose Ortiz gets the mounts. The horse's most recent out game, 6th of January at Goldstream. A mile in the uh, Diana Beach Stakes. And the horse went second by one and a half lengths that day. And he was wide and just never, you know, got the turn of foot until very late. You know, I think he needs a better trip. I think we could get it on this track. You know, this track, if you're a little bit wide on the dirt, it's not half bad. And I think you could close up into a good race on this track. Um, you know, I think the, the speed will melt down this race when this horse could get the trip to win. Um, he hasn't won on dirt, and he's only won once on dirt. But, um, you know, that one race wasn't half bad. And, and with the pedigree, he should definitely handle the um, the natural dirt surface. Two back in the Brewers' Cup Juvenile Turf at Santino, a mile on the 3rd of November. He finished fifth by two and a quarter lengths that day. And a bit of a trouble trip. He moved a little bit late, but, you know, he just wasn't winning that day. And the Pilgrim at Aqueduct, mile 16th, 4th of October. He won by five and a quarter lengths that day. A little bit wide, or a lot bit wide that day. But he won it from a closing up victory. A very, very good run. And then um, closing weekend at Saratoga, mile 16th on the and main special. He won by a neck and he gamed it out to the wire closing up well 
he nearly broke his main going the Wilson Mild Saratoga in a main special. He finished second by a nose that they horrible beginning and didn't like the kickback on the the track that they uh, well didn't like. Shall I not say? He, he, I shouldn't say that didn't like the kickback because he was handling it, but he just didn't like the quirkiness of the Wilson Mild. Looked like he just was uncomfortable for the first furlong, but then he got into a good stride down the back stretch and then he was running in the final furlong. He just missed late, but if the race was mile sixteenth, he would have won. But he ran his hard on debut of a very long trip. That that day training well palm beach i'll give him a shot here on the ticket i think your second likely winner here is the two horse tireless the uh, statement for this horse for antonio gallardo and tom pletcher most recently on the 14th of january going mile 40 in a main special weight he won by three quarters length in a dream tracking trip when he got the turn of foot he held on to it getting no lasix again um you know he had lasix last time out back to no lasix that shouldn't be a problem he bro- he nearly broke the main of churchill going mile on the eighth in a main special weight in november where he finished second by one three quarter length he had a very wide trip but he he, he looked like he was staying the trip well that day and then they tried him on the turf uh, um you know for debut at kentucky downs over the mile where he just never really got going and then came back to run a keelan over the mile on the turf where he had a decent fifth i thought he wanted more ground but um you know he got down the race course well if there's a horse that you go for the mile and a half belmont right now or if it was a mile and a half belmont this year he's the kind of horse that looks like he could um you know stay that trip he is by union rags uh on the dam side but uh, refreshing here, I'll give him a shot. And I think the nine horse uh, ch- change of command for Tyler Gaffley and Chuck McGahee, you know, broke the main gaming it out at the Gulfstream a month ago, going a mile 16th, uh, first time winners, winning by a neck. He had to be used a lot that day, but he got the job done. I do like first time blinkers on him that should really concentrate him. You know, prior to that main special uh, main special weight over the seven at Goldstream, he won by six and a half lengths that day, and he took off clear late. A very good easy tracking trip. He should have won at um on day at uh, Aqueduct on the fourth uh, of November, going a mile. He finished second by a length, and he just drifted that day, which cost him really, really bad. Maybe the um you know the uh, five pound bug boy, um you know cost him race. But um, since then, he, you know if you take out that race, he hasn't run half bad, and definitely on, on the improve. Trotting well, pacing three to one. Let's use him in the pick four here. But to recap my selection for the feature 10th now from Tampa, it's Tim F. Davis. Going to take the six horse at Gate Road. Give kudos to the two horse Tireless and the nine horse. Change of command. 6293 Super. 629 in the multi race. So good luck to all. And please follow me on Twitter at Horse Racing Kid 5. Good luck, everybody.